The Lewis Burke Frumkiss Center for Writing and Culture at Hunter College presents 10 Years of Best-Selling Authors and Great Thinkers. Each week we broadcast new videos from our 10-year speaker archive online for free at our website. We look forward to seeing you again when it's safe. Please enjoy this presentation from the archives of the Lewis Burke Frumkiss Center for Writing and Culture at Hunter College. Stephen Victor is a prominent New York dermatologist associated with Lenox Hill Hospital whose clients include some of the most beautiful women in the world. However, it is also rumored, though unproved, that hundreds of years ago it was Stephen who told the original Count Dracula of Transylvania to stay out of the sun. Um, in addition to practicing classical dermatology, Stephen is also a creative medical researcher and entrepreneur with a passionate interest in regenerative, regenerative medicine. That last means he owns or directs companies that do pioneering work, experimenting with stromal cell, uh, stem cells, endothelial cells, fibroblast cells, red blood cells, in order to find new methods of delaying aging and otherwise improving the human health condition. Uh, essentially then, Stephen is searching for the proverbial fountain of youth and after his presentation, you may agree he has found it, but you may also ask him questions if you have doubts or if you're seeking perpetual life or something like that. It gives me great pleasure to present Stephen Victor. Thank you, Lewis. And I'm really honored to be invited tonight. I'm going to figure out the microphone. OK, much better. Okay, so I am a cosmetic dermatologist and I've gotten into regenerative medicine in the last seven years and literally seven years ago and part of why I'm here, I wrote my first book called Ageless Beauty. And in the last seven years, I've been on an adventure to figure out regenerative medicine to keep everybody living as long as you can, but most important, as healthy as you can, be as good as you can. So it's not great to get older if you really don't have all your faculties and believe it or not, there's somebody alive today that's gonna to live to 150 with all the technology we've invented in regenerative medicine. And what we're doing for the last seven years is kind of like in development, so it's seven years later, I'm gonna kind of show you where we are, where we're going, and we hope to do, and I hope I fascinate you, and ask questions whenever you wish. And I'm actually just bothered Lewis before to find me a ghostwriter because I'm trying to write a book. As Lewis said, the fountain of youth is in your fat, believe it or not, so it's one time it's good to be fat because in your fat, are the stromal vascular fraction slash stem cells that can change your medical life and your life and let you live happier, better, and actually really fix some really interesting diseases we'll go over. Yep. So the concept really, what we really care about regenerative medicine is the future of medicine that is actually here today. And what regenerative medicine is, we take your own body cells or your own body tissue and we use them to heal you, fix you, fix diseases, help you age better. And if you think about it, really, it goes back for decades. By taking coronary artery bypasses, we've actually taken the saffron vein out of your leg, we trim it, we clean it, and we put it in your heart. And that's regenerative medicine, using your own body's tissue, in this case, your own blood vessels to fix your heart disease. So this has been around a long time. The biggest problem we're seeing in medicine today, and hopefully you guys are not suffering from this, is managed care. You go to managed care, you sit in this office, it's crazy busy, you finally get in to see your internist or your doctor, and he spends about three or four minutes with you. He pokes you, he feels you, maybe he talks to you if you're lucky, and he says, okay, come on back. And he really doesn't even talk to you until you're sick. And we all own cars, we all own houses, and I tell my patients, we're like different in what we're doing, and I'll go through that, is if your car needs a tune-up, you don't wait till your car breaks down on the highway. You take your car into a regular tune-up, you take good care of it, and your house, the same thing. Because one of the parts in my book of Ageless Beauty, I compared the body to a house. And you look at a house, there's your outside is your skin or your paint. Inside is your arteries, which are your plumbing. You have your electrical wire, you have your walls. Do you wait your house collapses totally before you fix it? No. As things break, you repair them. So why in the human body, in, in disease and wellness, do we not work on the body 
Why do we wait till we get sick before we even try to do something? So we're at 460 Park. It's our new venture. We opened it up two years ago. We've done 100 plus, 150 patients with stroma of actual fraction, or we call them stem cells. We have operating rooms that are open in 30 days. And again, we're a work in progress. So we're about reject age physical exams. We, don't, we spend a day with you. We don't spend two minutes with you. We look at your lifestyle. We look at your diet. We look at your DNA. We look at your testing. Because in today's world, you can actually look at somebody's blood test studies, and you can actually predict disease entities, and you can prevent them, again, instead of waiting for you to come out. And one of our biggest products that we use is cellular therapy. We'll get into that because I think you'll be amazed what we've been able to do. So the center is operated by seasoned U.S. physicians, and one of the interesting things about a U.S. physician is that we're opening a center in Abu Dhabi, and the people in the Mideast and probably around the world because we travel really, really relish the U.S. physicians and our talents in taking care of people. So we're all about regenerative medicine. We want you to live as long as you can, but more importantly, we want you to have quality of life. And we're opening, a, hopefully, an international center in Dubai and other centers like we have in New York. And we've not just traditional medicine. We've taken Western medicine, Eastern medicine, or Oriental medicine. We've taken the best of each of these philosophies and integrated it into one thing because we really want you to live as long as you can and as best as you can. Just think, living to 150. My, my grandmother lived to 103, and her secret was a, a, basically some scotch before she went to sleep every night. And, you know, most of us go to the hospital. When we go to the hospital, we go when we're sick. And believe it or not, as we're sitting here, we're aging. There are diseases in our body that are percolating, and unfortunately, the managed care world today the doctor doesn't pay attention to you anymore. We want to pay attention to you, and we call it a life zone. Because there are testings that we can do today, genetic testing, DNA testing, all kinds of testing that we can predict illness in the future. And we have things that we can do today to basically not let you get sick, not wait until you get sick. So anti-aging, what we're all about, and we want, basically it's a one-on-one -on -one consultation. It usually runs a day. And one of the terms you probably have heard is the term concierge medicine. It's getting to be a hot term in the world where you actually have a doctor who actually can call you back. You can speak to the doctor. He'll spend a day with you. He'll answer your questions. He'll talk about your lifestyle, your diet, and he'll really pay attention to your health, and he'll try to keep you healthy instead of just waiting till you're sick. And we have one of the best concierge medicine we just came. We'll introduce later. So we basically designed a program that fits the individual because we're all different. We all have different kinds of problems. So we, take, we can basically determine your rate of aging. We, know, we can look at things that are not happened yet. We call them subclinical. We can assess your risks and we can find a weak part of your body and we can actually develop programs and various treatments that we can keep you from the hospital because today's world, you don't want to be in hospitals. So with technology today and software technology and physiological aging, this is here today. We can have your medical records in the cloud. We can test you. We can do things today through patented technology we couldn't do 10 years ago. Technology is moving at speed of lightning. So we look at all your aging. We have patented technology. We look at your physical scores. We look at your cardiac age. We look at your lungs, your age of your lungs. We look at your brain. The brain is very important. We look at your skin. We believe that inside wellness is as important as outside wellness. When you look good, you feel better about yourself. We look at your immunological system because that fights disease. So it's very important to do these full studies. And to really do these full studies, it takes a whole day of spending time with you and really talking to you and understanding what's going on in your body. We want you to be healthy and quality of life. Plus, we also work on the outside. We get rid of your wrinkles. We give you special skin care. We test your skin. We have surgical procedures that we use stem cells and fat. And I think, that, as Lewis pointed out, probably the most fascinating part of what we do is stem cells. We call, it's really called stromal vascular fraction. These cells come from the blood vessels that's located in your fat. A lot of you have heard about bone marrow transplantation in leukemia patients or bone marrow. It's the same cellular population, but it's easier to get them out of your fat. And I've never had a patient tell me, don't take my fat. Take more as a matter of fact. They always want to take your fat. And the big difference between bone marrow and fat, 
we have 100 times more of the cellular cells there that are reparative cells. And when I was doing one patient about six years ago, she was the eighth grade science teacher at Stuyvesant High School. And we all know Stuyvesant High School is probably the most famous science school in New York. And I was talking all this fancy medical language to her. He said, you know, you have to stop. You've got to bring it down to the people. And basically what we're doing with the cellular therapy, if you walk out of here and you fall down and break your leg, you break your bone, you break your muscle, you break some blood vessels, you break your nerves, sometimes the bone goes through the skin. What does the body do? The body is so smart and we named the technology IntelliCell because the cells are released from the blood vessels. First thing that happens, platelets are released, stop the bleeding. Then you basically increase blood flow to start the healing process. Then you have anti-inflammatory process going on with these cells because any kind of injury and any disease is inflammation. Then the body starts building new tissue, new muscle, new blood vessels, new nerves, new bone, new skin. So in three months, your leg is as good as new. So that's the body's magic, and we basically harvest the body's magic. So we have the, probably the most advanced technology, we believe, around the world today. Whoops, going the wrong way, sorry. So this is a picture of our FDA registered, FDA inspected lab. It's actually part of our office and part of our surgical suite. And believe it or not, I'm, seven years ago I'd be on a podium like this and I'd put this list up and say these cells can treat these various kinds of problems. So the list of disease entities that I'm showing you here today, which is kind of vast, are treatable with this cellular population that's locked up in your blood vessels and your fat that we harvest. And we've treated around 90% of these disease entities successfully. And the technology is getting better and better every day. So this is what the lab looks like. We basically, you come in, we harvest 60 cc's or two ounces of adipose or fat from your abdomen usually. It goes into a special isolator, which is a very sterile environment. We follow all the FDA protocols. It takes us one hour to extract the cells from the blood vessels, and then the cells go back to the physicians. We have patented technology for the ultrasonic cavitation way of making the cellular product that does not use enzymes, so we're exempt from the FDA. So we've now treated 485 patients in the United States successfully in our facility and some facilities out in Arizona. So about five years ago, this young man was six foot nine. He's from Norway. He was actually a point guard. He won the Nike three-point contest. He led the Norway Olympic team to a gold medal, and he was recruited by Wake Forest. Had a full, full scholarship. He was scheduled to play varsity ball. He shows up, and what happens to the poor kid? He has bilateral patellar tendonitis. means his kneecaps were infected. He was on crutches. He couldn't play the whole season. They cut his scholarship, and because of Manhattan College, which, you, which is basically north, and we work with them in the orthopedic guys, they picked him up, they sent him to us, they paid for him, and we treated him twice. He was back on the court in three months. It's four years later. He's playing professional ball in Europe, and he has no pain, full mobility, and technology is so funny today. This, this young boy tweets me how he does in the game, so he wants to keep me appraised how he's doing. And his dream is to come back here and actually play for the Knicks someday. This is an MRI of one of our marathon runners who had bone-on-bone -bone hips and severe pain. After one treatment, we're able to grow back her cartilage and her hips, and we've done many hip patients, so we've, we basically, you, at the future and potentially now, you won't need hip surgery. So you know, unfortunately, all surgeries are problematic. It's not surgery, it's the anesthesiology. I, fear, I feel bad for poor Joan Rivers. My mother at 74 had broken her hip, and she went in for a common everyday hip surgery, and unfortunately, she died from the anesthesia also. So surgery is risky. So we have a therapy today that we can do without anesthesia, and we do as well as any surgical procedure. This is one of our eight ALS patients, and the red picture shows something called the QEG, which is inflammation of the brain that happens in these ALS patients. Three weeks later, you see the inflammation's gone. You see the nice green tissue. So she went from not being able to stand up walking into walls, her neurologist telling her that in a year she's going to die. She came to us and after one cellular treatment, she was walking straight, reading the newspapers, and her neurologist said, you're not gonna die. We've done eight people. This is an ALS patient, Lou Gehrig's patient. We've done eight so far. There's 35,000 people in the United States that suffer from Lou Gehrig. It's a terrible, terrible disease. 
in one year's time, you go from being normal to really being in a wheelchair. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't speak. It's, it's really a sad disease. And there are no medical treatments. There's no medications, there's nothing today. So we've only treated eight patients so far, and all eight patients have shown significant improve, improvement so far. We don't cure people, but we increase their quality of life. This is one of my poster childs. He was a, he's a 62-year-old type 1 diabetic who was on 60 units of insulin. He developed what they call bilateral Bell's palsy. His eye was drooping, his face was drooping, his tongue was paralyzed. He went to the Mayo Clinic. He went to the Cleveland Clinic. He took every single medication known to mankind. He's actually a pharmaceutical executive. And they told him they were going to sew his eye closed. He, they told him to retire. He couldn't talk. His tongue was paralyzed. So he came to us. We treated him once. You see the picture on the right. We treated him twice. He's normal. These are his own cells from his own blood vessels in his fat, the cellular therapy that basically made him normal. And not what's most interesting with this gentleman, when he went back to his endocrinologist, his insulin requirements went from 60 units to 5 units a day. And basically all the sequelae from diabetes have been ameliorated with this gentleman and he's actually doing better than ever. He's about three years later and still doing well. So there are hope for the diabetics using your own cells. This is what I would do a lot of, because I am a cosmetic dermatologist. Without doing plastic surgery, without doing surgery, I take fresh fat plus cells, I inject them in the face, I do the neck, the chest, and the hands, and I can make you look 20, 20, 30 years younger. This is, these are gums, you know, gum recession. If you have gum recession or lost a bone in your mouth, you go to the the dentist, they cut this terrible, painful flap from the top of your mouth. It's like eating 10 pizzas, getting burned. You have the surgery. It's terribly painful. It only works 75% of the time. If you have bone loss, they use cadaver bone. So we're able to harvest these patients' cells, inject them in the mouth, grow back their gums completely, and grow back their bone. So periodontal disease, which is a terrible $6 billion problem in the older population, and the surgery is brutal will be something of the past in the very near future, which is really now. This is my 15-year-old skier. She's very cute. She was pre-Olympic. She was skiing out in Vail. She was racing. She tripped, fell down. She had what's called above-the-boot fracture, 29 fractures through the skin. They rushed her to the hospital, put this rod in. The doctors out there told her that she would never probably ever ski professionally again. She'd be lucky if she skied in six months. So they flew her from Vail to New York. We treated her with the orthopedic surgeons. And three weeks later, she was back on an exercise bike. Three months later, she was competing at pre-Olympic again. And she's 15 years old. And the other thing is that you probably read about hyperbaric oxygen. And we're big believers that hyperbaric oxygen with the stem cells we're talking about will become routine in therapy. Because when you go down into these kind of pressurized oxygen, it causes stem cell release from your blood vessels that augment what we're doing. And this is the real future of medicine, and I can tell you my own personal story. So I'm 63 years old, and about four years ago, I developed really bad carpal tunnel syndrome from too much computer and too much liposuction. Of course, being a doctor, I went to my most famous hand surgeon, and I had it in both hands. When you have neurological pain from carpal tunnel, without, you know, as a doctor, we tell people how bad it is. When you experience it personally, it was brutal. So the, the game plan was do my left hand first, let it heal, because my hands were my life, wait three months, do my right hand. So I went to my famous friend, who's a great guy, and my own hospital. I had the surgery, everything went smooth. It was 15 minutes, I woke up. Three weeks later, I started developing scar tissue in my left hand, and my thumb started contracting, which is a complication, it's not common. So I went back to my hand surgeon friend, and I said, okay, this is not good, I need my hands. And in the meantime, my right hand was killing me. He said, well, we can inject cortisone in your hand, but that's not going to be good either because cortisone, as you know, has good points but bad points. We're going to cause muscle atrophy and weakness, and I need my hands. So I said, that doesn't work. So I ended up having cellular therapy myself. It happened that I was training other doctors, and we ran out of patients, so I decided to become the patient. Within two weeks, my left hand was normal. Within three weeks, my right hand was, pain was all gone. Carpal tunnel was gone. It's almost four years later. My hands are pretty much perfect. But probably the most interesting thing I can relate to everybody in the audience, and I heard this from every single patient, you know, Doc, 
I just feel younger. I feel euphoric. I feel better. I feel like I'm 20 years younger. And I could tell you, I had the same experience. And we thought about it and looked at this, because part of aging is inflammation. So as you, when you were younger, you know, you went to sleep, in the morning you wake up, you pop out of bed. Today, you, you know, you wake up and it's one leg, the other leg, and you kind of like push yourself out of bed. And that was kind of like me four years ago a little bit. Now I wake up and I just pop out of bed again. And we heard this from patient after patient. I feel better, the inflammation's reduced, because these cells are more powerful than cortisone by 1,000 times with no side effect. Remember, you break your leg, what happens? Tremendous amount of inflammation. These cells turn off inflammation. So when you take inflammation away, which is part of aging, you feel better, you feel younger, you live longer, your quality of life is vastly improved. We have gentlemen who fly over from the Mideast and all they're coming for is just to feel younger again. And they come in fours and fives, they come from China and we do them and they keep coming and coming because this cellular population just makes you feel 10, 20 years younger. It, it homes to the problems, it goes to the problem, it's anti-inflammatory, it grows new tissue, it seeks out what's going, what's going on in your body that's wrong and repairs it. So as I said at the beginning, there are people you guys know today that will live to 150. But the one thing my grandmother said when she was 103, she said she was tired. She wasn't sure she wanted to live much longer. You know, she had a great life. So I kept it short, Lewis, for you. So I, you guys wanted to ask questions, because this is regenerative medicine is the future of medicine, just so you know. In the Congress today, there are two senators that put a bill in, Dr. Senator Boxer and Kirk. They have done studies that show regenerative medicine will save the insurance companies and Medicare $250 billion a year. So we can fix your knee for 15000 You go to the hospital, it's 75000 And we do better than the surgical people do today. Thank you, Stephen. Fascinating talk. I'm sure we have lots of questions. Adele has the mic. She will run around and offer the mic to people. <laughs> Do and or will insurance companies cover this? Well, right now the insurance companies do not cover it. Eventually, the answer will be yes. The question is when. And because you're dealing with, you know, Medicare people that sets the pace and the government, and the government, as we all know, is kind of a little bit slow and behind at times. But understand, in Medicare last year, they spent $9 billion in knee surgery and knee replacements. We can save them 40 to 50 percent of that nine billion dollars, which is crazy, crazy numbers. Would, I would think that a lot of doctors in the medical profession and the pharmaceuticals would not be happy about this. They're, they love this. Really? Yeah, because honestly, we're treating the patients what we call unmet clinical needs. So if you have a basic everyday problem, we're not going to do you. There are so many knee surgeries that go bad. There are so many hip surgeries that go bad. ALS, 35,000 people. They have nowhere to go. Multiple sclerosis patients, post-traumatic concussion trauma syndrome. We've done NFL guys. We've done veterans. They have nowhere to go. Our patient population for the cellular therapy today is really the patient that has nowhere else to go. And these patients are costing our system tremendous amount of money. And believe it or not, they're frustrating the poor doctors. So do you think the insurance companies will cover this in the future? In the future, yes, but the future is unfortunately five or ten years from now. Um, two questions. First question is, uh, post-acute MI, what, what are the advances in stem, stem surge, um, you know, implantation doing now and what do you expect in the future? And then I'll ask my second question. Okay, so the good question. So we've taken a couple cardiac patients where their heart has decreased, you know, their cardiac output. And they then basically from no output, a gentleman on a balloon pump, we did it out at the Arizona Medical Center. We treated him with our therapy. We actually flew our lab out there. And we treated him with the open heart people. His heart went from no beating to basically 28% and they were taking the balloon pump out. We had a gentleman who was down to 17%, which really at 17%, you can't do much. Because really we function around 55% when we're kind of at rest and, and when we exercise, it goes up and up. He's up to almost 40%. The one thing we know with these cells, and you're right, that we someday you'll see in the emergency room or before, right at cardiac time, somebody harvesting two ounces of fat in the local 
making cells, an hour later giving the patient, and protecting the heart from all that terrible myocardial damage. And you're right, it'll be standard of care one day. That, that, that's millions of lives, I mean, really. Uh, it, it's um, 1.6 million a year. My, my, my second question is, is it true that Louis Frumpkis is 143 years old? Actually, Lou is 140. I don't know if you covered this because I was late, but okay. what about Parkinson's? We've done some Parkinson's patients so far, and we've done one very, very severe one, only once, and no results yet. We did a young doctor who tells me he doesn't twitch, even though he twitches. He doesn't twitch anymore. Neurological patients take multiple treatments. We've had MS patients where they have no bladder control, total bladder control, blind in an eye, now C of an eye. But again, we're not curing people. In the neurological diseases, it's multiple treatments, and again, it'll last for X number of years, and they'll have to get treated again, but that's okay. We just keep treating them and treating them. And we tell the ALS patients, there's a chance. You'll never die from ALS. If we can keep retreating you as technology gets better and better, you'll just die of old age, and that's okay. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Boop, boop. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see. All right. Um, you mentioned very little about the money that's involved in this. ALS patients, why shouldn't they be covered by Medicare or their insurance unless it's still in the research process and they're not going to do it unless it's proven beyond? It's new technology. It's under an exemption of the FDA. So what we're doing now is we're starting clinical studies, what we call IND studies, to get FDA claim approval so we can go out and say we really treat ALS. Right now we make cells. And that's anywhere from five to ten years and about $150 million and a five-year fight with the Medicare people to cover this. And if we're lucky, we'll get fast-tracked. It'll be two years, three years, only $50 million. The government is very afraid to, I don't know if you know this, every year only 12 drugs are approved by the FDA. I don't know if you know that. And sometimes they make mistakes. They don't like making mistakes. The insurance companies, even though we don't have FDA claim approval, but FDA approval of what we do and exemption, they don't, they, they, the politics in Washington are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I can't begin, we have, we, we, we've been with lobbyists, we've spoken to Medicare, they're interested, they're look, they'll look at it, but it's, it's a three to five year adventure to go down the political train, and then it depends on who's president. You know, they each have their own crazy ideas about health care and, and budget, so, but I agree. They should be covered. Because you mentioned Dubai, and anybody who's anybody in Dubai can come here without worrying about right. money. Um, getting to one more question about making people look better and younger. Um, there are so many things out there that promise so much help, and I get it on my computer all the time. What can you recommend, turkeys or whatever? Is it fat that you have to inject in the lines or whatever? What is the best um, I know. It's an interesting question now, because, so because there's a lot of medical devices. They have to be cleared, not approved. And they come out like, they come out like you have no idea in my world, I'm sure. And, and they come out to the consumer world, and most do not work. At the end of the day, good old surgery and good old cellular ther therapy do work. There's an old adage I tell people. If it doesn't hurt and there's no downtime, it doesn't really work. So you see all these ads, no downtime, doesn't hurt, no downtime, doesn't hurt. At the end of the day, guess what? No results. The body has to be cut, inflamed to get, to get results. You need a healing process time, downtime to get real results. So there's a million of these people out there promising you not to hurt you, no downtime, you know, lunchtime this, lunchtime that, but just don't work. For a, a complete medical checkup and everything, and you test the blood and this and that, how much are you talking about? $25,000. Yeah, so okay. As again, it's expensive, but in the managed care world, think about it, you go to the managed care doctor, he pokes you, touches you for three minutes, you're lucky if he talks to you, and you leave, and this happens, you get sick, you end up in the hospital. How much you just cost the medical system, your family, your recovery, your medications? It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So actually, concierge medicine is cheap, and regenerative medicine is cheap. 
We just don't understand this yet because the medical insurance system, especially Obamacare, is going through such craziness today. And we're going to see what happens. But we are expensive. We do know that. But how much are you worth? Exactly. Um, has, um, how about regenerative research on the brain? Uh, it's, it's, there's a tremendous amount being done for autism. I, uh, we have done one autistic. My mentor has done 210 autistic children. Anybody under the age of 14, the autistic kids do unbelievably well. They're still autistic, but behavior-wise, they speak. It's unbelievable. There's tremendous amount of research in Parkinson's, ALS, dementia, Alzheimer's, autism. It's crazy the amount of stuff that's out there. And again, as I said, we're not we're out there for the unmet clinical problems. And we can make these people's quality of life better, not cure them, but change their quality of life for them. And a lot of times in autistic children, it's the family. It's amazing. We have videos that you just want to cry. Hi. Are there problems treating patients with dry eyes in the hyperbaric chamber? Uh, not if you go to somewhere where they really know what they're doing, so the answer is no. But, but, but hyperbaric chambers are usually 10 plus treatments, so it's not, it's not a miracle treatment. There are multiple treatments. There's a company you've probably heard about that I know is doing um, stem cell treatment uh, experimentation with adipose tissue called Cytori. We know them well. Uh, is what you're doing very similar to what they're doing, or is it different? Yes, well, we're very different. Cytori uses enzymes, so they have to harvest two or 300 cc's of fat for you, which is a mini liposuction. Because they use enzymes, enzymes come from bacteria, the FDA worries about the enzymes mutating the cells. In our technology, we only need two ounces of fat, which is like one-third of what they need. We use sound waves ultrasonic cavitation that's been used in the body for decades for lipotripsy, all these things, just to break up the tissue, to separate the cells. And we make more cells than they do. So there are competition. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, could you elaborate more on what it is that you do with uh, people with autism, what the process is, and more on like the, the success stories? And so basically, like an autistic child, just like an adult, we harvest two ounces of fat, but we have an anesthesiologist usually because we need to sedate them because sometimes they're not the cooperative. I've been hit by a few of them kind of violently. Mm -hmm. So we harvest two ounces of fat. They go to the lab. The technician who's sitting, Stephanie, sitting in the audience, we make cells. We give them back intravenously. And within basically three months, you see tremendous changes. My first autistic child I did in Athens, Greece with my mentor. And it was seven years ago. He was eight years old. He's obviously 15 today. He was, didn't talk. He was a behavioral problem. He slammed me in the face, which my little eight-year-old got me. And today, he's a 15-year-old child. He speaks. He behaves. He still goes to special schools. But for the family, who are both physicians, it's a miracle. And this kid has done super well. And there's about 211 of them who, who have done really well. But after the age of 14, they don't do as well. It's the younger you get them, the better they do. That's it? Oh, you, you had three for a quarter already. Sure. Yeah, no, you could do it. <laughs> OK. No. I was going to ask you, all these wonderfully um, healthy 100-plus-year-olds, what do they die of in the end? Old age. And what is old age? That's a good question. Inflammation uh, makes the body runs out. But as I said earlier, there is somebody who you guys all know, and I know, it's going to live to 150. Because what kills us or what makes us die it's really inflammation. It's like I tell patients that you kind of think of inflammation in your body as little Pac-Man eating away at all the good stuff. So these cells turn off the Pac-Man and grow back new tissue so you get younger and younger. We have taken kidney failure patients and grown back their kidneys to normal. Heart muscle, we've grown bone, tendon. We've done crazy stuff. I'm not a doctor and I don't want to steal his thunder but probably he does regenerative 
medicine and old age and death are degenerative. <laughs> That's cute. Last question. Last question. I'm only kidding. Uh, on a personal note, my, my brother has uh, amino and amino, yes. One of those? Blood cancer. Okay, blood cancer. And my <laughs> sister and I offered, I mean, he's got the best care. Right. Um, but we offered our stem cells. And they said no because we're too old. Okay, so what Th that's really a misnomer because we have shown, we've done patients as old as 100. I know that sounds crazy, as young as eight. We've done a lot of people in their 80s. The stem cells that are locked up in your blood vessels really don't age. So the people, the doctors who say that are just wrong. There's a lot, of, the field that I'm in, it's new for medicine even though it's 12 years old. And believe it or not, this all started with horses. The horses have been treated with their own stem cells from their adipose tissue for their injuries for seven years before humans. So there's a lot of misnomers still that doctors don't understand or know, and part of what we're doing in our company and myself is education, teaching them what reality is and what's the truth, because misnomers like the cells are too old is not true. My brother has the best, I mean, he the best doctors ever. Right. And I don't know why he went up to Yale and there was a woman. Why they would say that if it's not true? Well, unfortunately, that's what happens. There are doctors who just, it, because when we went to medical school, my generation, this didn't exist. I mean, listen, I, I could tell stories that when I went to college, I had an electric typewriter. That was about it. I didn't have a calculator or a computer. My kids look, make, look at me like, what are you talking about, Daddy? You didn't have these things? No. And doctors are very set in their ways. It takes a long time to educate them, and, but it's happening, you know, seven years later, as I said, when I got up on a podium like this and showed the slide of all diseases, people would throw darts at me, especially professional doctors. Now they go, oh my God, I want to come see, talk to you. Yeah, I know, it's, they're learning. It takes a long time for physicians to learn something new. Just the way it goes. I want to thank Stephen Victor for what has to be one of the more fascinating talks we've heard. And uh, she'd like to ask one more question. And then after Stephen, after this one question, you're all invited for refreshments back there. And those of you who are bold enough may come ask Stephen personally. You didn't mention cancer. Can um, have you, I'm sure you've experimented with cancer patients. What kind of results have so you had? So the first thing, that? we don't love the word experiment because we don't experiment on people, we actually treat them. So the answer with cancer is there are, the answer is it works in a sense. So when cancer causes a lot of inflammation, chemotherapy causes tremendous inflammation. And we believe that after cancer treatments or cancer, cellular therapy will be, again, a gold standard because when you take that inflammation away, the patient's quality of life is much better and they live longer. So you can't cure the cancer what you can do is increase or improve their quality of life, and you can extend their lives. But again, unfortunately, cancer is, is not going to, I mean, maybe in the future they'll figure something out, and I hope they do. Again, this is a young technology. And the things that we've done today, we, we you know, in our office, we're amazed. We had a gentleman fly in on Sunday from the Dominican Republic who's Italian. He has something called amyloidosis, which is a disease that comes from the bone marrow and basically invades his body. He walked in looking like, a kiss of death. Wheelchair, couldn't get in the cab, they flew him up. We treated him on Sunday. We, do, we, treat, we treat people every day of the week. When we finished, when he left, he told me he felt better. He walked out on his own. He got into the cab on his own. And the daughters called us and said, my father has never felt this good in 20 years. He's like a new man. And that's, that's quality of life. And that's what it's all about. <laughs>